Hey guys, welcome to another mod review on this channel. Today I'm going to show you the ultimate car mod for Minecraft version 1.18.2. This mod adds basically everything you need for your new transportation system in your Minecraft world. It does not only include working cars in the vanilla Minecraft style, but adds roads, signposts, crash barriers and street markings as well as a whole fuel production system to your game. If you are searching for a specific part of the video, just jump to the chapter you're interested in. Otherwise, let's get started. The ultimate car mod adds several items for road construction to your game. Right now you are seeing how these items and blocks can be crafted. In general, I recommend installing just enough items as a mod by using the ultimate car mod, so you can see the crafting recipes of all items whenever you need them in-game. The mod adds asphalt for your roads into the game. For height variation of your road, you can use asphalt slopes, flat asphalt slopes and asphalt slabs. Note that every car except the SUV can only drive up half a block, so definitely make sure to place asphalt slopes, asphalt slabs or just normal Minecraft slabs on your road. You can add a large selection of street markings to your roads with painters. You can select the type of marking you want by sneaking and right-clicking the painter or the yellow painter and clicking on one of the many available marking types you want. The markings can be placed on the ground afterwards by simply right-clicking. So, how can you build your car? To craft a car you need one car workshop block and eight car workshop parts. The car workshop is a multi-block structure so it will only work when it's completed. You need to place the car workshop in the middle and surround it by the eight workshop parts. To use the workshop, you simply right click on it. There are several necessary components to craft your car. First of all, you need a body. There are five different types of bodies. The wooden body, the big wooden body, the transporter body, the SUV body and the sports car body. Choose the body depending on which type of car you want to build. You can obtain those bodies in different colors. Next, you need wheels. Every car except the transporter needs 4 wheels. The transporter needs 6 wheels. The SUV needs big wheels and every other car needs only small wheels. Your vehicle also needs an engine. There are three types, a three cylinder engine, a six cylinder engine and a truck engine. The six cylinder engine makes your car much faster but also needs more fuel. The truck engine is the most fuel efficient engine. Another required component is the tank. There are three different types of tanks. The small tank can hold 500 millibuckets of fuel, the medium 1000 millibuckets of fuel and the large tank 1500 millibuckets of fuel. Now let's move on to the optional components. With the license plate holder you are able to mount a license plate with custom text to your car. A license plate can be written on by right clicking it. You can apply a license plate to a car by sneaking and right clicking the plate on the car. Note that this requires a license plate holder on the car. The bumper can be added to all wooden cars, but is only cosmetical. Transporters are able to have either a container that extends your car's inventory or a tank container that holds up to 64,000 millibuckets of fluid. Let's move on to the usage of the car. You can turn on your engine by pressing and holding the R key until it is started. If your car won't start anymore, it is maybe because your battery is empty. You can recharge your battery either by driving around or by putting a fully charged battery into the slot with the battery icon. The starting time of your car is dependent on multiple factors, for example the engine temperature which is affected by the biome you are in or if you have driven the car shortly before turning the engine on again. If your car is damaged or your battery gets emptier, it also takes longer to start. By pressing I while sitting in the car, the car UI will open. Here you can check your car's damage, fuel level and inventory. You can also access the car's interface from the outside by shift and right clicking it. 
for transporters, the outside inventory is a separate inventory, so you can transport more stuff. When you spawn your car in the workshop, it will only have 10% fuel, so you can drive to a fuel station. But your car can also be refueled with a canister. The canister can be refueled by shift right clicking on a fuel station. To refuel your car with a canister, you have to put the canister in the slot with the canister icon. If you run out of fuel, you can also push your car by sneaking against it. You can repair your car in the workshop or with a repair kit. The repair kit will repair 5% of the damage. You can destroy your car by holding a hammer, screw or wrench in your hand and hitting it twice quickly. Your car gets damaged if you drive against other cars or blocks or if it's in contact with water or lava. If you craft a vehicle, you will get two keys which will be in the car inventory. You can lock and unlock your car by right clicking the key when you are in the range of 25 blocks. You can duplicate your key by putting a key and an iron ingot into a crafting table. The new key will be a copy of your old key. Finally, I'm going to show you how you produce fuel for your cars. First of all, you need to collect canola seeds by simply destroying grass. You can cultivate and harvest canola the same way as wheat. Now you need an oil mill to produce canola oil out of the crops. To operate the mill you need energy from a dynamo with a crank. Later you can use a generator, which is far more efficient but requires fuel and an engine to operate. To operate the dynamo, place the crank on top of the dynamo block and right click it to produce electricity. You need to connect the dynamo and the mill with a cable to transport the energy. Put the canola into the oil mill, you will get canola cake as a byproduct which can be used to breed all animals that can be bred with wheat and you will receive canola oil. Next, we require methanol. You need to craft a blast furnace, not the one of the newer Minecraft versions, but a blast furnace of the mod itself, and you need to put wood locks into it. The furnace also needs energy, so connect the dynamo or other energy source to the blast furnace as you did with the oil mill. Now we need to mix both fluids in a bag mix reactor. You can connect the oil mill and the blast furnace with fluid pipes to the bag mix reactor. Do not forget to put fluid extractors at the mill and the furnace to get the fluids flowing. The bag mix reactor also needs to be connected to a dynamo to work. You can always store your fluids in tanks after every step. Do not forget the fluid extractors and make sure you are not mixing up your fluids as it can mess up your process. To prevent mixing of different fluids, you can use filters in fluid extractors. For filters, you have to gather one bucket of the specific fluid and apply it by placing the bucket in the slot of the fluid extractor. If you break a fluid tank, its contents will still be stored inside the item. Next, we need the split tank. Connect the bag mix reactor and the split tank with fluid pipes and a fluid extractor. The split tank doesn't need electricity to work. The split tank will output two different fluids. One is biodiesel, which we can collect in a tank or directly output to a fuel station. The other is glycerin, which is, well, useless, but has to be collected in a tank to make the split tank process go on. Connect your biodiesel output to a gas station and your fuel production is completed. You can start refueling your car by driving the car next to the gas station and starting the fueling inside the gas station interface. With enough fuel produced, you can craft a generator, powered with biodiesel. The generator is far more efficient than the dynamo. 
you can supply the generator directly with the biodiesel from a fluid pipe or with a canister. That's it for this video, I hope you enjoyed it. If you are interested in further reviews, don't forget to subscribe. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.